Hello and welcome to Middle East Matters. I'm Mariam Saab. Coming up on this week's show, after seizing the Syrian town of Afrin, Turkey's president threatens to expand the military offensive into other Kurdish-held areas across northern Syria. The catacombs of Jerusalem, with cemeteries filled to capacity, France 24's Iris Mackler and Antoine Mariotti unearthed plans for multi-storied burial plots embedded in a mountain northwest of the Holy City. Also coming up, survivors with an undefeatable sense of style after fleeing the Islamic State group in Mosul. A group of Christian refugees in Amman have turned a church into a showroom for their inspiring new collection. But first, after Turkish troops and allied forces captured Afrin from Kurdish YPG fighters, Turkey says it's ready to take the fight beyond the Syrian city. President Recep Tayyip Erdogan is threatening to expand the country's military offensive to other Kurdish-held areas across northern Syria. He said Operation Olive Branch would eliminate what he calls a terror corridor along the Turkish border. Following the fall of Afrin, reports of looting are swirling as fears grow for civilians still trapped inside their city. Andrew Hillier reports. The town centre of Afrin under Turkish control. But barely a day after seizing the city from Syria's Kurds, Turkey's president is already thinking about his next target. Looking forward, we will continue this process with Manbij, Kobani, Rasalain, Kamishli, until this strip of land is no longer held by the Kurds. Turkey launched Operation Olive Branch more than eight weeks ago. Ankara says it wants to drive Kurdish People's Protection Units away from the Turkish border. It views the militants as an extension of the PKK, an outlawed group that has been waging an insurgency for decades in southeastern Turkey. Erdogan's threat raises the prospect of spreading conflict the length of Turkey's border with Syria, right up to the town of Kamishli. It could also bring Ankara into direct military confrontation with the U.S. The Kurds have been the U.S.'s biggest ally in the fight against the Islamic State group. As such, Washington has deployed its own troops in Manbij. The conflict has already driven a wedge between the two NATO allies. The U.S. has voiced concern about the effect Turkey's assault has had on efforts to eradicate Islamic State group militants. Washington has also called on Ankara to respect civilian lives amid reports of a humanitarian emergency. According to the UN, nearly 100,000 civilians have been displaced by the fighting. The Syrian government has also slammed Turkey, calling on Ankara to withdraw its forces immediately. We take you to Cairo next, where polls will soon open in a presidential election that's widely seen as a guaranteed win for the incumbent leader, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. The former army chief's only challenger is Musa Mustafa Musa, who's one of his staunchest supporters. Nadia Bletri, Claire Willio and Ruth Michelson went to meet supporters of the president. Here's what they found. In the streets surrounding Khama Halili, the largest outdoor market in Cairo, banners emblazoned with the face of President Sisi are everywhere. Mimin Azim, who works here, is an unconditional fan of the current leader. Azim voted for him four years ago and continues to be a fierce supporter. I love Sisi. <laughs> I love Sisi. I'm proud of him. This is his own uh, area. And uh, we, as in this area, uh, support him. And I personally support him. Azim is a jeweler who has sold pendants in honor of Sir Abdel Fattah al Sisi in this shop for many years. I did it two uh, ways, you know, S I S I, and those who wrote it for C C, you know, so it, it that's the same, you know, it's C C. Born to a military family, this supporter of the president preaches the benefits of his security policy. That this time, yeah, you know, we are just fighting terrorism and we need, still we need him, in my opinion. He's a figure, he's a symbol. Symbol of Egypt, symbol of fighting, symbol of, uh, uh, let's say, steadfastness. And um, I'll tell you the truth, he gives me strength. In reality, the promotion of Abdel Fattah al-Sisi's power is the only line permitted. The 2018 presidential election has seen all serious opposition to the premier excluded or imprisoned a few banners show the only other declared candidate in this election, Musa Mustafa Musa, who had recently called on people to vote Sisi. Critics say he is simply a puppet candidate. 
You need huge sums of money to compete in a presidential election. I can't drain my family's savings and everything we have to put up banners for one month. The only rallies so far have all been organized in favor of the president, like this one in the center of Cairo. Future voters for Abdel Fattah al-Sisi completely fill the street. With the result a foregone conclusion, many Egyptians view this election as a farce. There is no doubt that this president on the campaign trail will be re-elected for a second term on the 2nd of April. From Cairo to Jerusalem now, where an ancient tradition has been resurrected to solve a modern crisis, a shortage of places to bury the dead. Well, a massive network of catacombs excavated beneath a mountain over the past two years will provide enough space for 22,000 burial plots. The subterranean city of the dead came to life after diggers bore 45 metres under a mountain to carve out the unique graveyard. Iris Mackler and Antoine Mariotti have this report from Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, space is tight, even for the dead. This may be one of the last traditional burial spots remaining in the city's main cemetery. Israelis have become used to apartment-style burial, one on top of the other. But the new plan is another leap forward again. High-tech, high-rise burial underground. We have first floor, first balcony, second floor, second balcony and a third floor. So we're actually going to have every meter, 12 people can be buried here and the 12 people can be buried here. There'll be 22,000 graves built on a tunnel a kilometre long, with a grid of three avenues and seven streets. It will cost more than 45 million euros. There's going to be a plate with the name of the deceased, a rock plate, and here it's going to be all with stone. So it's going to be the same, just this is the behind, now you see behind that what's going on. Jews from all over the world want to be buried in Jerusalem. And for religious reasons, there's almost no cremation here. But locals remain divided over these modern catacombs. There is not enough space in our little country. And it's a good solution because the situation is critical. We don't have room, so it might be a good solution, but I don't know. It seems like a little bit um, disrespectful. I don't care where I'm buried. I want to enjoy a good life. When I'm dead, it doesn't matter anymore. This isn't just an Israeli problem. There'll be five billion people living in urban areas across the world by 2030. We hope that in the future there will be no more burial building outside. It just makes no sense. Glazer is now in talks with French companies, hoping to bring the Israeli way of death to France. But here it will only provide a temporary solution. This new Jerusalem catacomb will be full in 15 years. And finally, we take you into the workshop of a group of designers and models from Mosul. Women on a mission to prove that life under Islamic State group control did little to cramp their sense of style. The Iraqi refugees resettled in Jordan, where they're stitching up the seams of a life that threatened to be undone by terror. Far away from Paris Fashion Week, these scenes are taking place inside a church in Jordan. The models on the red carpet are victims of the so-called Islamic State, and tonight, they're presenting their latest clothing collections. They crafted these outfits themselves. These Christian refugees escaped Iraq and settled in Jordan four years ago, when the so-called Islamic State took over their hometown of Mosul and threatened to kill them. <laughs> They threatened the Christians and asked us for money. If we didn't pay them, they told us they would kill us with their knives. So all the Christians left. The women's lives changed for the better in this workshop in Amman. Here, they're learning a new trade, fashion design. Because their refugee status doesn't allow them to work in Jordan, the church has taken them in 
allowing them to earn a small living. The idea came from Italian priest Father Mario. We started this project also to help them with dealing, to teach them work and also to give the opportunity to work under the umbrella of the church, sure. For 21-year-old Hadil, fashion design changed her life. Uh, add something to my life and also uh, make me uh, more uh, creative by doing something, sewing uh, new clothes, I think very useful for me. Just like her co-workers, Hadil hopes that one day she'll be able to return to her studies in the US or in Australia, with perhaps the aim of becoming a professional designer. Well, that's it for this edition of Middle East Matters. Don't forget, you can reach out to us on both Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching.